Hey folks, I'm Red Monster SC, and in this video, I'm going to teach you a money making strategy using a rented Grey Cat Rock that only requires a basic starter package and 16,000 credits, and will have you earning 150,000 credits per hour mining gemstones. So stick around to learn how it's done. While mining in the Prospector or Mole might be some of the fastest ways to earn money in Star Citizen, they require 2 or 5 million in upfront starting credits or an expensive ship ledge to even access. It takes a lot of bounty hunting to earn up that type of cash. However, you can earn around 150,000 credits per hour rock mining, which can have you buying a Prospector or other large ships after a couple of successful mining sessions. The Grey Cat Rock only costs 172,000 credits to purchase, but you'll need to have a ship large enough to cart it around, which could easily put your starting costs over 1.5 million. But there's a trick. We can rent everything we need. That's right. No special ship pledges, no borrowed ships or begging in global chat for a chauffeur. Everything you need to earn 150,000 credits per hour mining can be rented for the low price of 15,573 credits. So let's show you how to get started. And a quick note. If you're thinking about trying Star Citizen, but haven't pledged for a starter pack yet, please consider using my referral code, which you can find linked in the description below. First, you can rent the Grey Cat Rock and Cutlass Black from any refinery shop in the verse. However, the prices vary by location. This combo could cost you as much as 37,000 credits if you were to go to Crew L1, but I've found that the new refineries at Arc L4 and Mike L5 have the combination for just under 16,000 credits. Given that choice, I'd suggest you fly whatever ship you have to Arc L4 and run a Cutlass Black and Grey Cat Rock for 24 hours. If you already have a pledged ship large enough to haul a ground vehicle, you can skip the Cutlass Black rental and rent the Rock on its own for less than 2,000 credits. I'd avoid renting for longer periods of time, even if you have the spare credits right now, as there's a bug that started around 315, which causes the rental system to pull out more credits than it displays, so you might end up spending more than you expected. Not to mention that the rental doesn't always disappear after the 24 hour rental period ends, so you might be able to get a few extra days out of a single rental if you're lucky. If you have some spare credits left over, you could also buy a Pembroke undersuit, helmet, and backpack. However, that combination will cost 17,600 credits and won't be required if you're on a shoestring budget. The location we're going to be mining on won't require the extreme heat environmental suit, but you could easily spring for it now, as some of the best moons for Hadonite will require it, and doing so would save you a trip. The rental vehicles will start off at your home landing zone, so you'll need to claim the rented Cutlass Black and wait out its initial timer before you're able to get started. That should only take a few minutes, and we won't worry about the Grey Cat Rock until we've arrived at the mining outpost on our target moon. Now that we have the equipment we need, let's head out to the mining grounds. The material we're searching for is Hadonite the most valuable of the gemstone deposits, and the moons around Hurston are where we're most likely to find it. While Aberdeen gives you the best chances to find Hadonite, Ariel, Magda, and Ida each offer reasonably good chances as well. Out of the three, Magda's and Ida's climates are the most moderate, allowing you to survive with just a standard flight suit. You can also mine on Crusader's moon Damar, which has a comfortable, moderate climate as well. If you've opted for the Pembroke environmental suit combo, then you can head straight to Aberdeen. This chart shows you where your best chances of finding each material are, as well as which moons require an environmental suit for extreme heat, highlighted in red, and extreme cold, highlighted in blue. These cheat sheets can be incredibly helpful while you're out mining, so check the link in the description below to download a copy for yourself, or check out the Mining Details channel on my Discord server. Now that we've arrived at our preferred moon, let's visit one of the mining outposts, where we can pull the Grey Cat Rock. Land near the Platinum Bay building, which will be situated right next to the two small vehicle pads with the blue logo. Leave your ramp open as you exit the Cutlass, as we'll be driving back inside here shortly. Head inside the building and file an insurance claim for your Grey Cat Rock. It should only take a few seconds to process the claim, after which you can retrieve the vehicle from the landing pad and drive it into the back of the Cutlass. Some people might be tempted to start mining right away, while they're still within sight of the outpost. However, this is a great way to get targeted by pirates and reavers. Traveling over the terrain in a ground vehicle is deceptively slow, and while your rock might be difficult to spot out in the wild, far from known locations, it's fairly easy to track down when you're close to an outpost. Don't make yourself an easy target. 
for the safest start to your mining session, I recommend jumping to the OM-1 marker above the moon, which is situated over the North Pole, and then head back down towards the planet on the rightward daylight side, which will be early morning. You could use the OM-2 marker, which is the southern pole, however, you should head towards the leftward daylight side instead. As you descend towards the surface, toggle into quantum travel mode to make sure you aren't heading directly towards another known outpost. Your cutlass can appear on radar scans up to about 100 kilometers away, and I prefer to keep as much distance as I can from a known outpost. As you get to the surface level, you can start scanning for deposits. There are two factors to keep in mind when scanning, and those are your active ping angle and the type of signal you're detecting. First, the ping angle indicates how wide of an arc you're scanning, oriented from the center of your targeting reticle. We can cycle between 360, 179, 90, 45, 22, 11, 5, and 2 degrees using the comma and period keys. My recommendation is to set it to 90 degrees and leave it there, as we'll be flying in a straight line over the terrain for the majority of our surveying time. This cuts down on the number of signals we pick up that are behind or directly broadside to us that we would normally overshoot. And second, we're going to be picking up two types of signals, ore deposits, which can only be mined with the prospector or mole, and the gemstone deposits, which we can mine with the rock. Ore deposits will appear on active pings at a distance of 8 to 10 kilometers as a dispersed cloud, and then they resolve to individual signals at around 3 kilometers. Gemstone deposits only appear on active pings when you're within about 4 kilometers as a dispersed cloud, and resolve to individual signals at a much shorter distance of around 800 meters. As you fly across the planet's surface, you'll detect a lot of ore deposits. You'll need to keep track of where they are, but can ignore them for the most part. Instead, you want to keep pinging until you get a new signal within 4 kilometers or less that did not appear on previous pings. These signals are usually your gemstone deposits, so you'll want to head towards them until the signals resolve, at which point you can start to get a detailed scan to determine gemstone type and mass. You can also determine the gemstone type by the color of mineral inclusions in the deposit, but that usually requires being really close to the rock and zooming in. Normal rock mineable deposits will have a mass of 0.84, but there are also small hand mineable gemstone deposits with 0.1 mass that will only appear on active pings within 3 to 500 meters. It's somewhat rare to run across one of these, but if you do, I would ignore it entirely as they don't provide nearly as many gemstones per deposit as their more massive counterparts. Like and subscribe now if you're enjoying this video, and leave a comment with your recommendations to make rock mining more efficient. Now that you've located a gemstone deposit, you've got one final choice to make and that's whether it's worth it to stop and mine the deposits. Each time you stop to mine a cluster, it takes about 5 minutes of setup time between landing, deploying the rock, returning the rock, and resuming your search. That's time you could spend searching for a more valuable deposit, so it makes more financial sense to ignore low value materials and single rocks. In general, I'd recommend ignoring any deposit with fewer than 3 rocks in a cluster and I'd ignore dolavine and aphorite unless they're in a cluster of five or more. That's going to provide you with the best profit per hour, and it's okay to leave some rocks behind. However, you're free to stop and mine whatever you'd like, especially if you've had a rough time finding anything. It's nice to get a few rocks in the bag to turn your mood around. As your mining run progresses, your cargo capacity should start filling up. It takes 27 deposits to fill the rock's cargo completely and you have the choice of either selling when the rock is full, or transferring the harvest of gemstones into your Cutlass Black inventory, and continuing on a longer mining run. A longer mining run is always preferable, but, in my experience, if the server crashes while you're out rock mining, then all of those gemstones are simply lost to the ether. It takes less than 15 minutes to make a sales run to a mining outpost and get back out into the field, and a server crash can't take your credits away from you. If you want to do a longer mining run, then you'll need to transfer the gemstones to the Cutlass inventory. You can do that by interacting with the cargo container on the rock while it's parked inside your vehicle's cargo bay. You'll need to first open up the cargo access panel at the rear of the rock, and then interact with the small cargo box that slides out to open up the inventory panels. On one side will be your rock cargo inventory, and on the opposite side is either your personal inventory or the vehicle's inventory. Unfortunately, the gemstones aren't stackable, and there's not a transfer all button with the current inventory system and 3.17.2, so you'll either need to transfer them one at a time, or you could set up a voice attack macro to speed up the process a little bit. I've got a video for that if you wanted to learn more. 
And finally, when you're ready to sell, just fly to the nearest mining outpost and walk into the storage building where they have the sales terminals. Select which vehicle you have your gemstones in and hit the sell button. You can also sell at the admin terminal at any major space station, and the price for gemstones is not subject to demand fluctuations, so it's always going to pay out the same regardless of what you're selling. If you've filled a Grey Cat rock up with Hatterite, you can expect about 190,000 credits. You could earn less if you've mixed in some Aphrite and Dolovine, and you could earn a lot more if you've transferred to your Cutlass inventory throughout the mining session. If you're efficient with your time, surveying, and mining, you could easily fill a rock in about an hour's worth of work and repeat this process for as long as you've got access to the vehicle. And if your rental timer runs out, you can always go back to Arc L4 and get another 24-hour rental for both vehicles. You'll break even for the rental costs after your first three gemstone deposits, and the rest of the time is pure profit. Now, there are a few recommendations I'd like to make. First, Aberdeen has the highest concentration of Hadonite, and also the most profitable mix of gemstone types. The environmental suits will cost another 18,000 credits, which you should be able to afford even after your first mining session. And once you have a Pembroke undersuit and helmet, you should move over there to increase your profits. Second, don't worry about buying the rock initially, even if you can afford it. You can rent it for less than 2,000 credits and, because there aren't any alternative components and mining lasers, there's no real benefit in customizing the loadout. Save those extra credits to buy a prospector or whatever other ship you've set your sights on. Also, I do not recommend spending real money to pledge for one. Ground vehicles have the lowest AUEC to real money value ratios ever, and it's really easy to earn those 2,000 credits to pay for the rental. Third, don't feel bad for leaving garbage rocks behind. If you want to be efficient, then you need to be comfortable passing up low value opportunities. That means you might only stop for Hadonite clusters of three or more, and ignore all Aphorite and Dolovine. It might feel like you're leaving a lot of valuable material behind, which is true, but that's letting you realize more valuable opportunities. And fourth, make sure that you're making sales runs on a regular basis. There are a lot of things that could go wrong, ranging from user error, piracy, or server performance. Nothing is worse than mining for three hours, only to have your ship blow up in your face and losing hundreds of thousands of credits worth of work. And there you have it, how you can earn 150,000 credits per hour by mining with a rented rock. If you've tried this method out, I'd love to hear about your experience in the comments below. And don't forget to check the pinned comment in case I've got other recommendations. You can connect with me on Twitch, YouTube, Twitter, Discord, and now Patreon by following the links in the description. I'd also like to thank my Patreon members for their ongoing support of the channel. And lastly, like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video, because patch 3.17.2 might wipe out our credit balances, but it can't keep them down for long.